Welcome back to another review of Erie, Indiana. If you're new here, I've been doing a review of every single episode of Erie, Indiana, so feel free to go back and watch previous videos. In this video, I'll be reviewing episode 10, The Lost Hour, so let's get into it. This episode originally aired in December 1st, 1991, and was directed by Bob Balaban, who I recognize from Seinfeld, and was written by Vance DeGeneres, who was Ellen DeGeneres' brother. The episode starts off with Marshall and Simon hanging out in Marshall's room. Simon is spending the night. Then Marshall's dad comes in to tell them that it's time for them to go to bed, but Marshall tells them it's daylight savings time and that they are setting their watches back one hour, so technically speaking, it's an hour earlier so they get to stay up an extra hour. But Marshall's dad tells him that Indiana doesn't go on daylight savings time. Marshall demands his hour, but Edgar explains to Marsh why. Sorry boys, it isn't just Erie, but the whole state of Indiana doesn't change to daylight savings time like the rest of America. Farmers say the cows would be confused, and drive-in theater owners claim they'd lose business if it got dark later. Marshall is pissed because he feels like he's been ripped off an hour of his life. Marshall's dad tells him to get into bed, and Marshall's mom tells him that losing one hour isn't going to kill Marshall, and that Simon's parents probably want Simon to be in bed. They really never told me when I have to go to bed, Mrs. Teller. Oh, um... Marshall's mom grabs the milk carton to take back, but notices the missing girl's picture. Marshall reads it, and it's a pic of Janet Donner, who's been missing almost a year. Marshall's parents are sad for her parents, but are glad they know where their kids are and tell Marshall and Simon to get to bed and kiss them goodnight. His parents leave and Marshall tells Simon that maybe the girl in the milk carton had the right idea. If they ran away, they could stay up as long as they want, pretty much no rules, and they wouldn't have to live in Erie. Then Marshall decides he's going to set back his watch like the rest of the world. They say goodnight to each other and go to sleep. The next morning, Marshall wakes up and hits Simon with the pillow to wake him up, only Simon isn't there. Marshall checks the bathroom and then downstairs, but the house is empty. Marshall heads outside, but again the whole neighborhood is empty. Marshall is walking around trying to see if he can find anyone until he sees a group of guys dressed in black carrying what looks like a body bag into the back of their removal truck. Marshall calls to one of them and one of them turns around to look at him, which you can see the reflection of the camera, lights, and crew on the sunglasses. Marshall starts asking them if they know anything that's going on, but the removal men just keep walking towards him. They start to get too close, and Marshall takes off running from them. A milk truck suddenly appears, and Marshall runs right into it and knocks him out. An old milkman comes out and pours milk onto Marshall. Meanwhile, in the real timeline, Simon is waking up to find Marshall gone. Downstairs, Marshall's family is having breakfast and greets Simon. Marshall's mom asks Simon where Marshall is, and Simon says he doesn't know. He thought he was downstairs already. Then Edgar thinks that maybe he was too rough on him last night, and that's probably why he's not downstairs. Uh, maybe I should go talk to him. Oh God, not that experimental coffee cake again. Simon then remembers what Marshall said about the runaway girl having the right idea but covers from him and says that Marshall's probably out jogging. Dad, this coffee cake is a tad chewy. Yes, it is. It cuts to the removal guys looking for Marshall, but they leave because they can't find him. Marshall asks a bunch of questions to the old milkman, who was played by Eric Christmas, who was known for Porky's, Mouse Hunt, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but I recognize him from Home Improvement, playing Sir Larry Houdini. He sadly passed away in 2000. The milkman tells Marshall to be quiet because he's giving him a headache. Marshall asks him how old he is and the milkman says he is 105 and a half. The milkman tells Marshall that those garbage men are not friendly and Marshall asks where everyone is. The milkman explains to him. Well everyone is right here except not exactly right now. Huh? Well you see, everybody exists just like you left them. Except that one hour ahead of us. Uh, you've disrupted the space-time continuum, causing an anomaly with sufficient gravity and mass to transport you to an alternate dimension. Huh? Well, man, just let's say you screw things up big time when you set your watch back and you wound up one hour behind everybody else in Erie. 
Welcome to the last hour. Marshall asks what those garbage men are doing. The milkman tells them that they are getting rid of things that don't belong there. To be destroyed to keep time on schedule. Matter like me? Uh, I'm afraid so. If they don't get rid of you, the space-time continuum could collapse. The milkman stops at Marshall's house, and Marshall questions him how he knows his name and where he lives. The milkman just says there's no time to explain because the girl's life was at stake. Because Marshall is the only one who can rescue her, he tells Marshall he's prepared a little demonstration. I think this guy's been delivering milk a little too long. He asks Marshall if he's ever looked in the back of a milk truck before, and Marshall says not lately, and asks what's back there, and the milkman tells him what should be. So Marshall takes a look and sees through the point of view of the milk carton. He sees his family eating breakfast and tries to get Simon's attention, which works, and Simon drops the milk carton out of shock. The milkman tells Marshall that there's another kid running around there like Marshall, but she's been there for a year. The milkman tells Marshall to find her and try to convince her that he can get them both out of there. Marshall asks why he doesn't do it, and the milkman says she doesn't trust him, but since Marshall's a kid, she might listen to him and gives Marshall some car keys, and realize they're his dad's car keys. He tells Marshall he has until 9 a.m. lost hour time to get back. Marshall gets in his dad's car and drives out. He loves the idea of him being on the open road alone, and no rules, and decides to go back to his hometown of Jersey. But even with no traffic, Jersey was a few hours away, and decides to stop at the world of stuff for some supplies, and starts looting this place. It cuts to the removal guys arriving and Marshall getting a net thrown on him. Marshall sees who it is and sees it's the girl from the milk carton, who was played by Nikki Cox, who was known for the show Unhappily Ever After. She brings Marshall down so the removal men don't see them by the window. Marshall realizes he likes her immediately, saying it's kinda hard not to like someone who saves your life. He tells her he knows who she is and calls her by her name Janet. Janet asks Marshall how he knows her name and he tells her that she's on every milk carton in Erie, that she's been missing for a year. She then says that she's not missing, that Erie is missing. She tells Marshall that she's been on her own for a while, but doesn't mind it because she can do whatever she wants, whenever she wants. Marshall tells her his story and how he got there, and she doesn't really believe him. She tells him that she's used to not seeing her family, but that just makes Marshall miss his. Marshall asks Janet if she wants to come with him to Jersey, she decides to go with them and suggests other places they can stop along the way. They stop at Marshall's house so Marshall can see it one last time. Just then the garbage guys see them and try to catch them. They run into Marshall's house but the removal guys keep chasing them. They run back outside and the milkman comes to the rescue. They jump into his milk truck and Marshall introduces Janet to the milkman. Hi. Uh, we met before. Really? Yeah, long time ago. They drive to Janet's house, and Janet asks how he knows where she lives. I'm a milkman. The milkman and Marshall tell Janet to look through the window of the milk truck, and she does, but she's hesitant. When she does, she sees her family, sad, sitting at the table, which makes her want to go home. The milkman tells them that it's a process to get home. At exactly on the hour. If you are in exactly the same spot you were when you came over, and if you set your watch ahead exactly one hour to the exact correct eerie time, you'll wind up exactly where you want to be. They agree to go home, but Marshall realizes he left his watch back in regular time. Janet suggests they can use hers, but the milkman says it doesn't work that way. Unless he can get someone to set his watch ahead, He'll be stuck here for another year. Marshall gets an idea and looks through the milk truck window and tells Simon to set his watch one hour ahead through the milk carton, and Simon does. Marshall and Janet say goodbye to each other and the milkman tells them that they have two minutes left. Simon is struggling setting Marshall's watch ahead. The milkman then takes Marshall back to his house and Marshall asks him who he is. Well, Marshall, just let's say that you're going to live to be a very old man. And someday, you'll be back here. My key? You mean you're 
I'm Laura. Marshall realizes he's been talking to his future self. Marshall races upstairs as garbage men arrive. Simon finally gets the watch at the correct time. Marshall's parents come in Marshall's room worried they haven't seen Marshall and are getting worried. Just then, Marshall pops up from the bed and tells them that he just overslept, and they look at the milk carton, which is empty now. Marshall and Simon put the milk carton into the evidence locker in the attic, and Marshall says he thinks he might have met himself as a really, really old man. Maybe in 90 years or so, he'll find out. And as for Janet, her family never gave up loving her, and nobody could believe where she'd been, but it didn't matter. She was home now. It then ends with the milk truck leaving Marshall's driveway. And that ends episode 10, The Lost Hour. What a great story. I always thought this would have made a great movie. I love the time travel or time movies or TV episodes involving it, and this episode definitely delivered. It still holds up too. I loved that all he did was turn his watch back one hour, but in Erie, Indiana, that's all it takes. Let me know if you remember this episode, and I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.